All right, guys, this is Sunscreen 101 on this July 4th weekend where the majority of you guys are probably outside running around butt naked and getting yourselves burnt to a crisp. So I figured what is more appropriate than just basically lecturing on how to protect your skin against the sun than our current weekend. So here goes Sunscreen 101. If there is any take home that you're gonna take from today, it's basically find the sunscreen that you like, that you'll actually stick to and wear. And if you're gonna wear it, make sure it's broad spectrum against both UVA and UVB, so it's not you're not wasting your time. And then finally, make sure that it's between the range of SPF 30 to 50. Anything below 30 is, mm, and anything above 50 is gimmicky because it's not gonna give you much protection. So what does SPF even stand for? For SPF stands for Sun Protection Factor. What the hell does that mean? It basically means the amount of time that it takes you to get burnt times that SPF number. So if you have an SPF of 15, for example, which you shouldn't, but whatever, and it takes you 10 minutes to burn, then 15 times 10 equals 150 minutes if you apply that SPF. Does that make sense? So that's what the SPF number means. It basically means it multiplies the amount of time that it usually takes you to burn by that factor. Now that we're done with math, what the hell is it protecting against? So not all SPF slash sunscreens are created equal. Some protect against UVA and some protect against both UVA and UVB. What is UVA? UV stands for ultraviolet. So the sun emits light. There is visible light that we see all around us that gives us these beautiful purple, green, white, gray colors, okay? And then there is ultraviolet light that we do not see with our naked eyes, and that is the UV. Within the UV, you have UVA, which causes aging. That's the UV that's gonna go deep into your skin and make you look all old and wrinkly, but it's also gonna cause melanoma, which is extremely scary, we'll talk about it in a second. And then there's UVB, which is gonna crisp and burn the superficial part of your skin, leading to that what you think is a nice tan initially, um, but can lead to superficial skin cancers like basal cells and squamous cells. Now, not all skin cancers are created equal, but no one can deny a statistic. So here goes. One in five Americans are gonna develop skin cancer. Look around you. If you're alone, then you're alone. But basically, one out of five of you are gonna develop skin cancer. And that's just bad enough, so 20%. Now, every hour, somebody dies from a melanoma. And that is even scarier because melanoma is not only a skin cancer, but it is one of the deadliest cancers, period, out there. So if we can catch it early, prevent it, avoid it, then kudos to you. So for all the skeptics out there who tell me, but I don't know if it's dangerous to apply a sunscreen on my skin, listen, if you're living in New York City, for example, the New York City air is probably more dangerous than that sunscreen that you're applying on your skin. So if that gives you any source of uh, comfort, which it probably doesn't, that's usually what I tell my patients. So at least this way you'll start wearing sunscreen. But no, in all seriousness, the risk of a skin cancer is far worse than using the risk of potentially getting from applying a sunscreen, if that makes sense. So basically, take home is wear the effing sunscreen. Just wear it, okay? It's gonna protect your skin. I am not endorsed by any brands, by any companies. Um, I'm not getting paid by anyone to say this. I'm not gonna talk about brands today. I just want you guys to understand why it's so important to wear sunscreen, that's it. Um, so yeah. So, where was I? So we talked about UVA, we talked about UVB, we talked about that not all sunscreens cover for both. So what types of sunscreens are out there? You're gonna have two main types of sunscreens, physical slash mineral blockers. Okay, we'll do like a little, like a little arrow. I'll try to like create something here. So the physical blockers are zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. These ones block for both UVA and UVB. And then you have the chemical sunscreens such as avobenzone, oxybenzone, dioxybenzone, sulisobenzone, that basically don't all block for UVA and UVB, but they're the chemical ones. So let's talk about physical. The physical ones act like a physical barrier that block the light from coming into your skin and just reflect it off. The chemical ones act like a sponge. So they're gonna absorb that light, convert it into heat, and then radiate it off so that your body does not absorb it. Um, I personally am a physical blocker kind of girl. 
because physical blockers are less irritating i have sensitive skin and therefore i don't want to get irritated to the chemicals and that's why i choose physical blockers also i have zero patience in life and so i like to use that sunscreen make sure it's working for me get about my day and not have to worry about it with chemical sunscreens you need to apply it let it simmer in marinate for 30 minutes and then go about your day i don't have time for that with kids with a life with a job even if i'm on vacation i just don't have time for that so i'd rather use the physical one chemical ones are more elegant because they don't have any white cast or shadow but they're not personally for me that's just my disclaimer within chemical ones not all of them block both uva and uvb avobenzone for example only blocks uva not uva and uvb whereas oxy and dioxy block for both so know what you're buying and do your homework when you're buying a chemical sunscreen just an fyi um I guess you are doing your homework by watching this, but I'm trying to give you a brief overview of everything in this video. So hopefully you guys found that helpful. The other thing is people, not people, brands used to market sunscreens as waterproof or sweatproof. That's a load of bullshit. There is nothing sweatproof or waterproof. If you're working out, you're probably doing this, you're wash, wiping it off away. It does not exist. If you're swimming, it does nothing. Nothing is going to beat the water from washing off your sunscreen. So the FDA recently changed that wording to say water resistant, and they have to say whether or not it's 40 or 80 minutes water resistant in the US. Um, my rule of thumb is if you're swimming or if you're working out, first of all, you're probably going to towel dry or you're probably rubbing your face. Just reapply the sunscreen after you're done. And if you're working out, I hope to God you're showering and then reapplying sunscreen after you're done. So that's the deal with the water resistant nomenclature. So hopefully this was helpful. I hope you guys now have a better understanding of what sunscreens are. When in doubt, if you're just kind of like really confused, hopefully you're not after watching this, just pick a physical sunscreen zinc or titanium zinc is stronger than titanium fyi um and if you don't have any sunscreen but you have your baby's diaper cream butt cream triple paste lying around that's like usually 15 percent zinc so that could be your backup sunscreen just saying so people who are scared to cover kids in sunscreens you're really applying physical sunscreen zinc on their bottoms to protect them from diaper rashes just a little tidbit also I'm going to do a quick demonstration under a woods lamp, which is a very, very um, specific dose of UVA. Um, so I could show you guys how sunscreens block for that um, UV light, because I have a lot of skeptics out there who are like, I put it on, but I don't really see it making a difference. Yeah, you're not going to see it make a difference, but if I put on the UVA, you're going to see how that light bounces back and protects your skin, including sunscreen powders, because I have read some comments from my Allure video, sunscreen powders do nothing. All right, so we're going to do a little demonstration here where we have cream, chemical sunscreen, and physical sunscreen on her hand. I'm going to apply a little bit of each right now. The first one to go on is gonna be cream, which is my favorite one, the Embryodis for summer, because it is so lightweight. Get that nicely rubbed in. After that, I'm gonna use this chemical sunscreen. Over here. To show you guys the power that sunscreen has to protect UV light. And finally, my third one is a physical sunscreen. It's a little bit tinted, but that doesn't make a difference. But this is one that also is zinc and titanium. I wanna shut out the lights and show you guys how each one works by blocking UV. So as you can see, the cream itself does nothing because it's there's no difference between her skin and the, where the cream is applied. Whereas where the chemical and the physical were applied, there is a clear block and it's protecting the skin. This is SPF powder, which a lot of skeptics think doesn't do anything, but I'm going to apply, I'm trying to just basically keep it within the square so you guys can see how SPF powder does block show you guys that SPF powders really do make a difference. 
look at her normal skin versus the area that has been protected.